good friend of mine. He's a, a wicked musician and a fantastic poet, and I'm, I'm blessed that he's going to perform with me tonight. His name is Graham Lowell. Yes. Yes. Patriotism is nothing to laugh at. But patriotism isn't going to do a damn thing for you when a bullet breaks the sound barrier over your head. When your boots touch down on the two-way shooting range, patriotism and politics, they go right out the window. When a professional soldier is called upon to do what he's been trained to do, it has been likened to a surgeon cutting out cancer. It is a filthy, difficult job. We don't like doing it, but it is our duty, and if we don't do it, no one else will. There is a refreshing honesty, candor, and lack of hypocrisy among the poets and soldiers. A hypocrite is a person who posits a particular form of action that they do not follow themselves. And a coward? Well, a coward is a person whose primary actions are based upon the emotion of fear. Any person that walks on concrete and has a flush toilet is a coward. You're never going to step into the war zone. That's why soldiers hate politicians, because they are hypocrites and cowards. If you're a soldier, you go overseas and you end up dead. The politicians will come to your funeral. They will stand in front of your family and they will stand in front of your friends. And the Queen or the Prime Minister or the Minister of National Defense will write a very official sounding letter to your mom. Fruitless. How weak the words must be written by the government to assuage the bereavement of those mothers who grieve for their sons who have died on the sea so gloriously in the fields and battles. But soldiers, soldiers have a duty, an oath that they have sworn voluntarily, and that duty supersedes everything, including your mother. You no longer have a name. Your name is your rank. A real person has a real name with a real life and a real family and real friends that exist when he's gone. And you no longer have a father. Only your brothers, who are the best of men that this nation could muster. Us. And no one else. War educates the senses. Perfects the physical constitution of the body. Brings men into such swift and close collision at the critical moments of life where man measures man. And as you measure, so too you shall be measured, but as a soldier, you have absolutely no right whatsoever to call me a murderer. I have made friends of horror and moral terror. I have seen things in hell's reality that I want to remember. I have memories that would make a normal man want to tear his own teeth out. I have served in the company of men who have hearts filled with love. Men who have wives and children and families. Men who have the strength of will to kill. To tap into that primordial instinct that allows them to kill without feeling, without emotion, without passion, and without judgment. For it is only your judgment that defeats them. Hence, soldiers have no freedom. They cannot strike. They cannot protest. And they have no freedom of speech. We commission our sons to drop fire on civilians, but their commanders will not allow them to write the word fuck on a plane. Because it is obscene. This cold for my brother. We used to polish our boots and clean our weapons and drink beer and quote war movies together. He led men into battle in Afghanistan. He came home with medals on his chest and the invisible scars of a veteran. So for my real brother, all my green brothers, the politicians, the hypocrites, the cowards, I have one question. What is the purpose of this useless, filthy, God-forsaken war? 